in this question we have we are given three point charges q1 is 5 microcoulombs q3 is 5 microcoulombs and q2 is minus 2 microcoulombs and they are separated by the distance a where a is 0.1 newtons and we have to find out the resultant electric force on q3 due to q1 and q2 so first of all let us think of what approach we will use to the problem how we will approach the problem so this here we have to find out the resultant force between point charges and obviously we will use Coulomb's law and Coulomb's law gives us that if there are two point charges QA and QB separated by a distance r then the force exerted by a on b is given by k where k is coulomb's constant q a q b upon r square to r cap where the direction is given by r cap which is a unit vector from q a to q b the second thing that we will use is that so we we'll use coulomb's law and find um, the forces between q1 uh, force exerted by Q1 on Q3 and force exerted by Q2 on Q3. And once we have both the forces, then we will remember that electric forces, force, obeys superposition. And what that means, let me write this. And what that means is that if you have two electric forces acting at a point, then the resultant electric force is the vector sum of the two electric forces. So, let's see how we can do that. Let's try to part 1 first. Coulomb's law will find what is force exerted by 1 on 3. And that is given by K, which is Coulomb's constant. Q1, Q3 upon, let's see what's the distance between them. So, this is A, this is A, it's a right angle and by Pythagoras theorem we get this as square root of A square plus A square which is square root 2 times A. And so this is over square root 2 A squared and that gives us 8.98 into 10 raised to 9, that's the Coulomb's constant. 5 into 10 raised to minus 6 coulombs, that is 5 microcoulombs, 5 into 10 raised to minus 6 coulombs over 2 into A is 0 0.1 squared. Let's see what that will come down to. So, um, let us approximate this a little. Say I'll think of this as 9. This is 2 into 10 raised to minus 2 and so that comes down to 25 times 9 uh, that is around 225 divided by 2 and that comes down to 11 and if we do this uh, it comes to, it becomes minus 12 9 this so it comes down to 11 newton okay here we did not consider direction, we have just found out the magnitude. So let us see what the direction of F13 will be. Direction of this is given by a unit vector R13 which acts from 1 to 3. So this is R13 cap, R13 cap and this is 11 R13 cap. And thus we have force 13 acts in the direction of R13 and that force is a force acting in this direction so this is f13 which is 11 newton in, in that direction okay let us now find out the force exerted by 2 on 3 so force exerted by 2 on 3 is given by k q2 q3 over a square and the direction is given by r23 cap where r23 is the unit vector that acts from 2 to 3. 
and that is given by 8.98 into 10 raised to 9 minus 2 microcoulombs that is minus 2 into 10 raised to minus 6 5 into 10 raised to minus 6 over 0 0.1 squared and so if you again think of this as 9 and this is essentially 10 raised to minus 2 <clears throat> and this becomes 2 into 5 10 into 9 and so we have this as minus 9 let me put my vector here direction vector r 2 3 newton and so this I can write this as 9 minus r 2 3 cap newton which means that this is a vector that acts um, let me use some other color and this is a vector that acts opposite to r2 3 that means it acts in this direction and this is my f2 3 vector which is 9 newton okay so we are done with part 1 now we come to part 2 where we have to find out the resultant of both this and we'll remember electric force obeys superposition so by superposition we get the force on 3 the resultant force on 3 is the force 1 3 plus force exerted by 2 on 3 and there are two ways to find this one is I can complete this parallelogram and find it geometrically for that I have to remember to draw these forces to scale and with the correct angle and then complete the parallelogram and find out the magnitude and the direction of the resultant but let me do it algebraically here and what I will do is basically resolve the vectors so that I can add them up easily this vector is along horizontal and if I resolve f13 along a direction parallel and perpendicular to this then I can add the parallel vectors and then I know what my perpendicular vector is and I can express my result in terms of i and j so let me think about um, <coughs> a coordinate axis such that my y coordinate is like this, my x coordinate, x axis is this, this direction, y axis is in this direction and I have, um, since this was a right angle, uh, this was a right triangle, this angle is 45 degrees and so this angle here is 45 degrees and if I resolve F13, I get this is F13 cos 45. And if I resolve it along the vertical direction, along the y-axis, this is F13 sine 45. This is in degrees. That is one thing we should remember. This is the angle that we are talking about them in degrees. And so... I can write F13 as F13 was 11. So let me write it as in I and, uh, okay. in I and J terms where I is the unit vector in this direction and J is the unit vector in positive Y direction. So I can write this as 11 cos 45 I cap where this is the magnitude and the direction is given by i cap so it's a vector of magnitude 11 cos 45 along i cap direction plus 11 sin 45 j cap plus f23 is a vector in the minus j direction so its magnitude is minus 9 j cap and um, cos 45 and sin 45 is approximately 0.7 so if I have cos 45 and sin 45 it is approximately 0 0.7 so this comes down to let me see um, I cap into 11 into 0 0.7 um, comes approximately equal to 0.78 so this is 7 point, uh, sorry 7.8 minus 9 and 
plus J gap into again it's the same thing 7.8 and so my resultant is minus 1.2 I cap plus 7.8 J cap and if I try to draw my resultant on this diagram uh, this is J cap this is 7.8 J cap and minus 1.2 is somewhere here so this will be my resultant F3 and so to recap um, we had a problem in which we had three point charges uh, and we had to find out the resultant force on one of the point charges due to the other two point charges. First we used Coulomb's law uh, to find out the force that individual charges exerted on Q3 and then we used the principle of superposition uh, to find that is basically vector sum to find the resultant electric force on Q3 due to the two forces.